How deadly. If you know me, you know that one of my most favorite things about Project Sekai is its 3D MVs. And last year, to celebrate the two year anniversary of the game, I ranked all the 3D MVs that we had so far. And I'm back now to do that same thing again. From Dream Place to All I Need or Things I Like, I'm ranking every 3D MV we've gotten since the last anniversary event up to the third year celebration. That's 29 new MVs to discuss today and 103 total because I'll be allocating all the new music videos into the greater list I ranked last time so we can see how the list all looks when considering every MV available so far. And if that's confusing because I'm bad at wording myself, don't worry, it'll make more sense once we get into the list. I've organized them into tiers again for this video, F through S, so as to help keep us organized at such a large scale. And don't forget that while I will sometimes comment on the costumes used for the official videos from the Project Sekai channel, that doesn't affect the overall score. To make sure we're all on the same page, keep in mind that I'm ranking the video, not the song, which is why some bangers may end up lower on the list. You don't have to agree with all my opinions, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't insult me for them, or for the times where I struggle with pronunciation. I am already embarrassed that I'm not very good at Japanese, and it actually hurts quite a lot to get made fun of for it. Don't forget that at the end of the day, I do like almost all of the songs and videos in this game. Being low on the list isn't a death sentence, it just means I don't like it as much as some others available. That's how rankings like this work. I can't make them all number one. So do try to remember that, and be aware that my list probably won't match yours one to one. And finally, please remember that this is all just an excuse for me to have fun discussing a game I like. So let's get the engine started and talk about some Vocaloid music already. F tier. Number 29, My Love is Hellfire. I promise this is the most negative I'm gonna be for the video. I won't be a big old negative Nelly after this, okay? Like I said, I'm not ranking the song, I'm ranking the music video, but it's so hard to concentrate on it because I fucking hate Mako screeching like this. <laughs> Forcing myself to ignore how much my ears are bleeding though, this video is so boring for such a fiery haha song. Her choreography is basically just her flapping her arms around. She barely uses the stage. These lights behind her are cool, I guess, but it also forces her to stay all the way to the front of the stage. And this fire effect looks super cheap. I also think using her default outfit was a terrible idea because one, the pleasant coffee shop owner vibe clashes with the overall tone of the song if you ask me. And two, because it's incredibly distracting how her jacket has been glued onto her shoulders to keep it from falling off. It's great that we've been getting 3D MVs to feature more of the virtual singers besides just Miku, but this is just not it, Chief. My Love is Hellfire slams all the way to the very bottom of the list, down below even my previous bottom placed MV, Reborn. Down to number 103 overall. It can truly only go up from here. Number 28, Afterglow. Unfortunately, we're back to another Virtual Singer Spotlight MV, but I promise they don't all score so low. And luckily, Luca's music video doesn't suffer from most of the problems Mako had. The use of the space and camera work is more interesting, and her dancing, while a bit limited, fits the tone of the song nicely. I am a bit disappointed that they swapped out her Leonid outfit into just a different school uniform. I do get that it helps her resemble the original music video much more, but I like her Sekai look better. I think the use of the sunset is very pretty, and the end of the song leans into the imagery of the original music video really excellently, but I can't help but find myself wishing we got more here. Funnily enough, despite my track record with calling Leonid MVs boring, I find myself wishing Luca was playing her guitar instead of dancing. Afterglow has a really nice instrumental, and I think watching Luca play it in the video would be more fun than simply making her dance next to her instrument. Overall, Afterglow lands at 97, above Newly Edgy Idols and below Near. Number 27, Clear Weather. Leonid comes in for the first time on this list while also getting to play with Mako for the first time too. And much like most songs in the F tier, its big problem is that it's just pretty boring. Even for Leonid, this is pretty bare bones. They stand and play. End of description. The constant changing of the environment around them and the camera effects feels like the devs asking themselves, shit, how do we make this interesting? They are very pretty environments, but there's just nothing really here. Overall, it's going in at 96, right above Afterglow and still lower than near. 
Number 26, all I need are things I like. Wonderland Showtime's first entry on the list comes with a visual upgrade. Along with the anniversary celebration this year, Project Sekai has shifted the art style to now have these fancy shaders and stuff, and it looks really nice, but I'll be going into these nice new graphics later in the list. For now, we get to focus on how this is a perfect example that going ham with special effects doesn't automatically make a music video more entertaining. I guess you certainly couldn't call it boring, but it does feel pretty substanceless. I am tickled by them pretending to be in zero gravity, and the lights are very pretty. And it's nice to see this rare combo together on stage. These three look really good together color-wise. But at the end of the day, it's just not leaving much of an impact beyond, golly, the Sergus kids bought a green screen. In the overall ranking, all I need or things I like is capping off the F tier at number 88, placing above Time Machine, but not quite cracking into the D tier with Starry Sky Melody. And that is the F tier videos all wrapped up. So let's take a second to take a gander at some songs that didn't get a 3D MV that I would have liked to see jump into the third dimension. We'll go down the list in order again, which means we're looking at Leo Need songs first. I think Peaky Peaky, All Night Thinking of You, and Pulse of the Meteor are gonna be my picks, and the reason for each of these should be pretty obvious. They don't have Miku. I'll discuss this more at the end of the video, but Leonid is one of the teams with the least amount of diversity amongst the virtual singers in 3D MVs. I like Miku plenty, but I also think it'd be fun to get to see the other Vocaloids singing and playing the guitar with the girls more often, too. Let's listen to some music. Um, where did you get that? What is this? I made it myself. Okay. On the computer. D tier. Number 25, The Snow White Princess. More More Jump makes their first appearance on the list with a very nice music video. The effect of the mirror at the beginning is slick and the choreography is spot on throughout the performance. Everyone's perfectly in time, it really feels like watching idols. The stage also goes through a few different iterations of this very pretty ice staircase theme and each version looks excellent. Like I said, it's a very nice MV. There's also just not much to unpack. There's not really a story being told or focus on characters characterization, it's just nice. I do like how much passion we get from Minori in this lineup before the finale. Overall, the Snow White Princess jumps pretty high into the D tier, landing at number 82, above Jishu Mashoku and below Tale of the Deep Sea Lily. Number 24, Blue Planet. We're back to the virtual singers with a new Miku focus song for the game. Blue Planet is certainly more interesting a watch than the other Miku only MVs we've gotten. Her energy is infectious with her dancing and jumping around, and this location is really nice, especially the flower park seemingly outside the virtual world. I can't help but find myself curious to how this performance plays out in a live show, if it even can. Why doesn't it go higher on the list? Maybe it's because a part of me wishes Miku would acknowledge her other versions from the other Sekais. Maybe it's because I can see the camera work is doing the heavy lifting on keeping the MV from feeling too static. I'm not sure, I just know that this is what my heart tells me, and sometimes that's all you need. Blue Planet is placing at 80, just above Tale of the Deep Sea Lily, and below From Tokyo in the greater list of MVs. Number 23, The Miniature Garden's Coral. Fucking the way Tsukasa walks. This MV features a lot of very up-close shots, which makes sense. The event this goes with had a big emphasis on character and was quite personal, and being this close to the characters reflects that really well. Not to mention, it allows us to get a good look at the really nice face animation. It does, however, sort of clash when the characters continue to dance while we focus on only their faces. It can look awkward watching them shimmy and shake without getting to see the actual dancing going on down there. It's not a secret that Project Sekai has a really good grasp on making sunsets look great, and I think it's no better displayed than here. And this circular formation they go into where they effectively start dancing to each other rather than the audience is delightful, which puts the Miniature Garden's Coral at number 76. Above Needly, or I, I guess it's actually pronounced Needle, and below Machi. Number 22, Glow. This is perhaps the most we see them try to do with Leonid, having the girls isolated and shifted around the rooftop during these segments with the backwards rain is interesting and different. And then the chorus kicks in and it's kind of just more of the same thing we usually get. 
but now Miku's in the center. I appreciate the attempt at something with the framing and how the girls look at each other to pass off the vocals to the next member. And again, we get some nice rim lighting and a pretty skybox, but I can't help but notice I do end up spending most of the second half of the song just looking at the sky. Leonid's background is more interesting than their playing. It goes above the miniature garden's coral because it avoids the awkward framing we'd seen with the circus kids, but I can't really put it much higher than that. So overall, Glow takes the 75th slot, just above the miniature garden's coral and still below Machi. And that is the D tier wrapped up, so let's take another break to look at some not 3D MVs, this time for more and more jump. I think Float Planner, Hard Forecast, and Darling Dance would be fun picks to become 3D MVs. All three of these songs are just a little more unique than what we often get for the Idol's 3D performances. Darling Dance leans into an edgier feel, and Float Planner could play with the flight attendant theme in a similar way we've seen in Project Diva games with Tricolor Airline. Hard Forecast is the most like other more more jump songs we've gotten, but I like it a lot and want to see the girls dance to it. You said you should go to a yoga retreat. <laughs> you would get and kicked out within two well, hours. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, she goes, you'll you'll find yourself, and I'm like, the problem is I have found myself. <laughs> Can I come to your yoga retreat? <laughs> Let me in. C tier. Number 21, Dream Place. These outfits are fucking cute, but I'm so distracted by how Shizuku is the only one wearing a pure white dress and the rest are in these cream color dresses. I adore how they decorate the stage to make their dream place, and once again the choreography is real professional level stuff. The idol fans within the Project Sekai community get to eat good with more more jumps MVs, and I'm happy for them. We also get an honestly pretty limp full team jump here, and the poses they all strike at the end are super cute. It's also fascinating that the doors in the background match the girls in order Minori, Haruka, Mako, Iri, Shizuku. But the balloons don't. Shizuku has pink balloons near her door. Are they meant to represent Iri? Minori's red balloons are a good fit for Mako, and the blue balloons near Mako's door could either fit Kaito or Haruka. But why does Iri have yellow balloons? The only characters represented with yellow are the Tenmas, and I don't think she really knows either of them. And what about Haruka? These purplish balloons. Maybe I'm thinking too much about this, but dissecting a hidden narrative with a background definitely makes the MV a fun one and gets it to the overall score ranked at number 70, above Roki and below Stage of Sekai. Number 20, Hello Worker. Hello Worker is another good example of the Project Sekai team clearly trying to shake up the Leonid formula. Having the sky outside the window fill up with buildings as Ichika and the others play out the story of the song, of being overworked and wanting more, it's nice, as is the bandmates small moments to chime in. It's a more Ichika and Luka heavy composition, but there's still a clear sense of camaraderie with how the MV is filmed. There are points where Ichika feels a little lost as to what she should be doing without the usual guitar in hand, and so he spends the first half of the song with nothing to play, but overall it's still a pretty dang visually interesting music video for the band. It lands itself at number 67 on the bigger list, beating out the world hasn't even started yet, but not quite getting to Ifudodo's level. Number 19, Becoming Pigs Yeah Yeah. This is certainly the cutest lens bin, if I do say so myself. The retro channel display and aspect ratio really lends the MV a homemade feel, especially when paired with lens choreo. It's some good dance and don't get me wrong, but it also feels a little made up on the spot, which all work together to give the MV a level of authenticity to it. It really does seem like Len asked Mako and Rin to film him dance so he could go take that footage and make a music video. It all definitely comes together to create a more unique one-person MV than what we've seen so far. So Becoming Pigs, yeah yeah, is landing at number 59 overall, above Hitorinbo Envy and below Ego Rock. Number 18, Starry Sky Orchestra. This is the first and so far only time we've seen Luca perform with the Circus Bunch in 3D. I thought that was neat because it feels like she should have been on stage before now, and maybe that's because her long pink hair fits right in alongside Emu and Tsukasa's similarly warm colors. But to zero in on the MV at hand, I think the choreography deserves a round of applause. There's a lot of kicks and jumps that perfectly evoke the feeling of Peter Pan taking off, to the point you nearly 
usually expect the kids to start flying around as the song crescendos. The lighting and effects also deserve a shout out. It starts with this warm, soft lighting that feels like a nightlight, which shifts into this darker but more colorful bubble effect, implying that as the song progresses, you start letting your thoughts wander into a daydream, which finally culminate into this dreamy, mystical purple lighting. The daydream has fully turned into a blissful slumber, where the star effect keeps up the magic, but the dimmed lights keeps you cozy, wrapped in a proverbial blanket cuddled up in bed. Starry Sky Orchestra gets full marks for nailing the theme, which is what helps it reach number 58 overall. Above, Becoming Pigs, Yeah Yeah, and below, Ego Rock. Number 17, Peach Colored Key. Immediately, the most interesting character to explore with this MV is the camera. The song starts with the cameraman hurrying towards the girls, and from there it stays handheld, giving the whole music video a sense of unease, really. The girls keep performing towards the audience, not really the camera, giving the video a sense of something akin to voyeurism. It makes you feel a little seasick, a little unsteady, which plays into the plot of the song perfectly. The event this song goes with sees the girls making a big decision on how they will continue their careers, and how that affects their normal day-to-day -day lives. And the MV parallels that not only with the frantic hand cam framing, but also with the use of railroad markings, signifying the coming fork in the road and no turning back available. And as Irie makes that decision in the bridge, the camera steadies out, no longer lost in the what-ifs the future and uncertainty held. It's really cool to see Project Sekai allowing itself to lean into the story of events alongside their corresponding songs more as we move forward in its lifetime. Peach Colored Key is going to top off the C tier, ranking in at number 55, above Ice Drop and just below Ready Steady in the B tier. And with that, the C tier is all done. Let's explore some music videos for the Vivid Bad Squad real quick before moving on to the next tier level. If I got to pick, I'd want Imperial Girl, YY, and Shanty to get 3D MVs. Imperial Girl and YY are just such different vibes than what we usually see the squad dance to in 3D. They often get to perform to cool songs. It'd be fun to see the boys get to join into the cuter vibes of YY, and in general, to see the squad tackle the slower tunes. And I just really like Shanty, so that one should be 3D too. <laughs> Shadow, you're an asshole, man. You are what you eat, Sonic. What the? What the hell, man? Oh my god! I was kind of sick. Thanks. I worked hard on it. B tier. Number 16, Realize. And finally, Vivid Bad Squad makes their first appearance on the list today. What Realize lacks in terms of characterization or story, it makes up for with some very spiffy dancing and editing. Starting in the dark to build up tension before everything kicks off as Akito instructs the audience to clap their hands, makes the sudden lights feel like a pump of energy into you. A burst of a heartbeat that really feels like you're at a club or some other exciting event. The moment where the girls vanish from the cool triangle formation is another spike of visual interest and basically from there, it's all get hype, stay hype, as the lights get even brighter and the dancing becomes bouncier and more energetic. It's all a fun time, with the only downside being how distracted I am that Miku and Kohane are both wearing yellow. No one else matches. Make Miku wear the purple version of this outfit. The fashion faux pas doesn't change the video's good vibes, though, as Realize lands itself above Rei at number 52, just below Sekai. Number 15, Kimigure Mercy. I... Don't think I pronounced that right, but I'm trying, girl. <laughs> Having the girls pop into existence like this is such a fun way to start the music video, and really the whole thing is filled with these fun small moments. Minori's stupid run, the fact that they put Irie, the shortest member of the team, in the back for these shots where the girls have to lean around each other to be seen, and she makes it work! The way you can see Minori have to run to get into place in time, all their poses for this little scream they do, the way we get to see them exit the stage after the music stops, this MV is a true treat for people like me who love scoping out little moments where the character's personality shines through. The stage floor lighting up throughout the performance and the screen walls sliding in to match the original music video are delightful additions as well. Which means we're jumping all the way up to 46 where Kimigori Mercy lands itself between Color of Drops and Devil's Manor. Number 14, Rainy Snowdrop. 
Kaito makes his appearance with his Focus MV, and I promise I didn't rank him so much higher than the others just because he's my favorite virtual singer. Rather, it's because Honey eats and leaves zero crumbs behind with his performance. Kaito uses the entire stage, going left and right, back and forth, capitalizing on the space with this really tight dancing. He provides a level of energy and clear competence with his dancing that it leaves me baffled that they haven't had him perform with the similarly professional idols yet. Rainy Snowdrop shows what needs to go into a single person MV to keep it exciting. Spiffy effects, dramatic lighting, fancy location changes, all gimmicks that pale in comparison to what a high echelon level of stage presence provides. And it's paired with a stage that starts off rainy yet gradually shifts to glittery snow that matches the ebb and flow of the song. This is how you do a solo MV, which is why Rainy Snowdrop squeezes in at 45, just above Kimigure Mercy and below Devil's Manor. Number 13, Love Ka? Love Ka was by far the music video I got questioned about the most in the comments of my last 3D ranking video I did. Probably because it came out like days after I'd posted it, but it also seems to be a very popular MV amongst the general Project Sakai audience. And I must say that I think it is Nice. The screens behind the kids featuring the nauseating wave pattern and little sharks fit the vibe of the song perfectly, if not the original color palette. I like the use of the question mark lights across the floor, and the dancing is all around quite slick, especially this arm waving moment. There are moments where the colors invert, implying the layers of derangement that is more overt in the original MV, but overall, I feel Love Ka falls short on really capitalizing on any of these ideas. I like where it was going, but it never seems to actually get there. I wish should push the envelope more with the darker themes of the song, starting off with eerie inverted colors just to end with a cute little pirouette and everyone doing a funny little pose to camera feels like we lost the plot somewhere. I also want to say that I've mentioned before that I really like Mako's growl near the end, which prompted a handful of commenters to accuse the game of simply layering Mako over the original V Flower version. And I don't know where people are getting that info, but they sound nothing alike if you ask me. It makes me hope you all know that any voice bank can be tuned to growl like that. <laughs> Love Ka places at 40 overall, above If and below Angel's Clover. Number 12, The Wall. This gymnasium locale for the band to play in is so fun. It really feels like the girls are performing for like the school talent show or something. You damn near expect us to pan to some bleachers with the rest of the vocaloids cheering them on. I also love how much focus we're getting on the instruments for the video while also making sure we can see the girls singing too. Having the guitarists all turn around so they play in a circle to each other and the camera doing 360s around them makes this certainly the most unique video Leo needs gotten in terms of layout and visuals. The Wall is the final song in the B tier for today and ranks just below Angel's Clover at the top of the tier overall. And it's also the highest ranking Leonid MV from the third year batch of videos we're ranking today. It's not the best Leonid have overall, but falling just shy of the A tier is nothing to be disappointed with either. And like I said, that concludes the B-tier songs. Before we march into the next group of MVs, let's look at some Wonderland Showtime songs. I would have really liked it if Telecaster B-Boy, Ah, It's a Wonderful Cat Life, and 1925 had gotten 3D music videos. This collection of songs are the least cohesive in terms of why. Mostly it's just that I think they would have been fun. These are fun little songs that could have gotten some very cute stage decorations and choreography that we so often see with Wonderlands, and I would have liked to see those. Bro, can I get a sip of that water? It's not water. Yeah. Vodka. I like your style. It's vinegar. What? It's vinegar, puss. A tier. Number 11. It was a very beautiful June. That's right, we finally see our first Nightcore 25 entry into the list, all the way up here in the A tier. Maybe this means all the people who got mad that I had some Nightcore MVs in anything lower than C tier last video won't come after me this time. But don't worry, the Nightcore kids land this high not to appease some cranky commenters, but because they really earned it. I can't let myself get too far into this before pointing out how much I like all the artwork that's tucked up with the Escher steps in the background, but for the real meat of the MV, 
Nightcourt has adopted a very theatrical way of presenting their music videos in the game's third year to great effect. They feel very performed, in a way that serves pushing forward a plot to the viewer more effectively. I infinitely prefer this over the same sort of singing and dancing we already get with the circus and the squad that we saw Nightcourt doing earlier in the game's lifetime. The moments that really hit you here all have to do with the isolation of Miku they play with. Shots where she's suddenly alone, often framed by a fence. This one especially is effective, where suddenly Miku is missing, a giant gap left behind, reminiscent of how it feels when you lose a loved one. The MV says a lot without doing a lot, and that alone is impressive. It was a very beautiful June places itself at 35, above Patrick's Staccato and below Do Not Go. Number 10, Samsa. Something I really like with Samsa is how they use Kaito. He nearly acts like a conductor for the kids, prompting their movements and, in general, giving the vibe like he's facilitating their emotions, almost allowing them to express themselves. And this isn't the last time we'll see this smart use of the virtual singers on the list, giving them an air of importance and weight to their inclusion to the story, rather than just, this time they sang with someone other than Miku, I suppose. Samsa relishes in the small details that it uses to push the overall broken TV aesthetic the he has, mixing glitches and film grains to make the theme clear without it feeling hokey or pushed down your throat. I also love that the TVs in the background display whoever's singing during the Zuki 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 part and having the three make a wall here to separate Mafuyu and Kanade during the bridge, emulating how Mafuyu is being forced away from her friends by her mom. Like I said, Nightcord's MVs are more theatrical now and it has only been a positive direction for the group. Samsa places at 31 overall, squished between bitter choco decoration and Lost One's Weeping. Number 9. Egoist. Egoist feels like it was made just to flex all the cool new visual quirks they can play with. Things like having the kids disappear near the middle of the song, Mako shooting us through the door at the end, more exciting text on screen, and perhaps most obviously is this fancy grayscale effect, where they manage to gray out all the colors except for the warm yellows, oranges, and reds, helping the MV to match the original artwork in a way that has me super excited to play around with putting different characters and outfits into the song once it finally makes its way to the EN server. Outside of the visual effects, we're getting more of the top-notch choreo from the squad that we've come to expect. The perfectly timed kicks, another exciting triangle formation. It's like the developers heard me lament how often Vivid Bad Squad MVs are just them dancing, and decided to show me just how investing that can still be. Overall, Egoist lands at 23, above Gunsho Sanka and below Sensation. Number 8. I am, we are. Man, what a pretty music video! Starting with a shot of Shizuku within a gemstone is immediately grabbing, as we haven't really seen anything quite like this before, and the framing with Irie during the beginning, making it look like they touched despite Irie being behind Shizuku is super cool too. The choreography and use of lights keeps you held on throughout the verse, with short, succinct movements and subtle yet clear color washes to evoke emotion from the viewer, and then having the lights go out, leaving the group in silhouette as they build up the chorus, despite not being able to see them clearly, it feels intimate in a way. As if we're seeing the kids dancing together in a moment where they're not on stage, but where they're safe and together. For just a moment away from the peering eyes of the public, not idols, but simply friends. I've, I've gotten myself into talking about artsy feelings again, let's talk about something more concrete, like how the moment in the dark contrasts in a lovely way against the vibrant pinks during the follow-up. The whole world becomes bouncy and fun alongside the music as Shizuku finds confidence in herself and it's great. Bonus fun thing I noticed. Len starts his kick a little early here. He also bends forward the most, probably because he isn't in heels. These outfits are also super cute, which all comes together to have I Am We Are, the highest ranking More More Jump music video from the year, and getting it to top off the A tier, placing above Sensation, but just below Flyer in the S tier. And so we finally make it to the cream of the crop, and a gold star for all of you out there who noticed that yes, the S tier is the biggest one of the bunch. I told you I wasn't gonna be a negative of Nelly, but really quick, let's first talk about Nightcord's MVs, specifically the ones for Lower, Irony, and Somehow. And similar to last time, I picked these songs because I like Nightcord's music videos, and these are songs that I think could get some very cool, thoughtful direction, choreography, and editing that Nightcord so often displays. I want to see them perform these is the long and short of it, really. I think anybody can draw. Yeah, you do. And it's true. Could you not draw at all, like, when you started? Of course! 
Do you think I came out the pussy drawing fucking I, Mozart? I do. <laughs> S tier. Number seven. I'm mine. While rewatching this MV to properly discuss it here, there was a part of me that was like, oh no, did I allow myself to get caught up in Halasoy's super fun melody and put this too high on the list? And then we got to the dramatic spotlights and I was like, nah, it deserves to be up here. And I think that's a big part of it. It is easy to get caught up in the fun. All the virtual singers get plenty of time to shine and lots of fun close-ups as well. The lights are constantly in flux to keep up with their pace in a way that gives the stage energy without becoming too much. Also, the screens displaying the Sekai home screen triangles back there, so cute. Fun fact, during the fist bump, the twins get the most air off the ground, and Kaito kicks up the least. I adore how often the human characters are put front and center in this game, but it is super fun to see such a love letter to the Vocaloids here too. I'm Mine places at number 17 overall, above Dance Robot Dance, and below... Oh man, people always make fun of the way I pronounce this one. Here. Churu ri ra, churu ri ra, da da da. There. Happy. Number six, Brain Revolution Girl. Since the first time I saw this MV, I've had the image of the kids doing their skippity doo dah in time with the music lodged firmly in my head. It lives there rent free. I think it's especially fun how much they play with the camera here. They push it around, it tilts to match On's head movements, and comes in at these low angles we don't see very often. The ending is where it's at its coolest, if you ask me. The kids finish the chorus where the camera had been all over the place to match the intensity, and where you'd normally expect the video to end, it doesn't. They go into another small verse, and the way the camera wanders back to on makes it feel like we're starting over, like the MV goes back to the beginning. And then as if to finish things off for good, Miku kicks the legs out from under the cameraman. Similar to Egoist earlier, it's a fun example on how to use camera work and effective lighting to really enhance the squad's music videos that would otherwise just be cool dance parties. Brain Revolution Girl lands itself at a respectable 12 slot overall, above becoming potatoes and just shy of ID Smile. Number Number five, non breath oblige. I I think oblige is the French pronunciation and it's what they say in the song, so that's what I'm rolling with, okay? <laughs> Man, this is truly stunning. The use of the spotlights to highlight whoever is singing at a time makes them all feel alone despite standing right next to each other. That's a reoccurring vibe with the MV too. This isolation that the kids just can't break despite being within arm's length of their friends, reaching out for each other but always missing and passing each other by instead. The video also utilizes an excellent level of pacing, keeping everything pretty slow and subdued during the verse causes the chorus and the way how everything kicks off to hit you like a truck. Definitely enhanced by this impressive long take, 37 seconds go without a cut, increasing that level of tension. The use of the lights and speech bubbles filling the screen during the all-important I can't breathe and I hold my breath lyrics evoke a sense of anxiety, as if you yourself are struggling to inhale alongside the team. All to end with a melancholic, bittersweet ending. Hopeful, nearly happy with the painted tree in the back but the rest of the world is still empty, leaving a hollow feeling lingering in the background. When Non Breath Oblige was announced for Project Sekai, I was worried at how good the MV would be, since I like the song quite a lot. I'm glad that this time they did not disappoint. Non Breath Oblige ranks at 9 overall, above Tundema Wonders and below Journey. Number 4. Neo. Whoa, nice graphics! Yes, I am now going to talk about the fancy new shaders because this was the first video we got to see them used for, and with the cool new graphics and outfits for the characters, it all really comes together to push this brand new step in the kids' progress through their adventures feel. Even with an old stage used for portions of the MV, it still feels exciting and new with the way the lights shine off everything so well. But that's enough about the graphics, let's talk about the actual music video. You should know by now how much of a sucker I am for getting to see the team leaders interact like this, and it's nice that they get to spend the whole song on the same stage together this time, unlike Journey, where they were separated for most of it. Unfortunately though, despite being right next to each other, them actually interacting is still pretty sparse. We do still get to appreciate how different the kids are all though, like Kanade barely moving while Minori does whole jumps and twirls. She's also much slower at raising her fists here. The fact Tsukasa does a jump Jumping, twirling wave to the audiences towards the left, right, and back as Minori, Kohane, and Kanade wave towards the front audience. Miku and Kohane do a cute high five in the background here. And in their lineup, Minori's kicks are the highest, and really that's what makes this MV so fun. It isn't dense with symbolism or story. 
but it is fun. A fun time reveling in a cool new stage as the kids do some nice dancing. Does this make it deserve to rank this high? I think so. Sega knows that for a celebratory MV like this, there doesn't need to be more in it, as the act of celebrating is already all we needed here. It lands just above Non-Breath Oblige at number 8 overall, still not quite making it past Journey. Number 3, Childish War. This music video has so much ding-a-dang personality, all four performers really get to shine. Everyone feels integral to not only the song, but the story playing out in the video too. But I just have to give extra praise to whoever mocaps for Tsukasa. He's bringing 110% of his energy to the MV, and it is paying dividends. He's jumping and running around that fits perfectly with such a cartoonish, childish sort of song. I also think the lighting throughout the MV is fascinating. We're often in this twilight orange, which fits with the original idea where Nene starts off like this is a fairy tale, a bedtime story for some rowdy kids who just won't go to sleep. But the interesting thing about the lighting is how they wash out the colors enough to hide the green tint in Nene's hair, which works out really well. It helps her feel like she's not an outlier amongst all of her blonde companions here. All the effects are also spot on. As opposed to all I need are things I like earlier in the list, these don't feel haphazardly thrown around to add more movement on screen, they're actually facilitating the music video. The background changes to these flying knives when the two sides of the argument officially announces I hope you know this means war. The silhouettes during the attacking noises shows us that this is all just in their head, they aren't really throwing bows. I especially like it when the song pauses long enough for the gang to just start yelling at each other with the words of their argument filling out the screen to add to the visual noise alongside the actual noise. <laughs> and having it all end with a fun little dance party shows us that there's no harm, no foul. Bonus observation, but Tsukasa is like, not posing here. Everyone else strikes a pose, and this is just a normal man standing normally. I feel like we haven't seen someone stand so casually in this game before. It's just such a fun, energetic MV, it makes me want to be obnoxious and pause every few seconds to soak in what each character is doing. It looks great and keeps you invested all the way through. Which is why Childish War isn't only the highest ranking Wonderland Showtime MV from this year, but it's now the highest ranking MV for the group overall, placing at number 6, above Journey and below Ghost Girl. Number 2. And Geki. Remember how I said Night Chords MVs have gotten more theatrical? Angeki literally translates to theater, and oh man, is there so much to discuss here. First, having the MV start with the paper puppets representing Mafuyu and her mom sets it into your head, you are about to watch a play because you do. The gang plays out the story of Mafuyu and all her struggles with her parents so far. We start with close-ups of the members, but Mafuyu very deliberately moves stiffly, like the marionette doll she's so heavily attributed to, showing us how everything she does in her life is an act, how she's just puppeted along, doing what she must without feeling anything. But notably, you can even see Mafuyu's stilted movements in the background before she's even put into focus. The live version of this must be stunning. And here comes one of the biggest things that's MV has Luca. Remember how I talked about Kaito feeling intentionally used earlier with Samsa? Luca is similarly utilized brilliantly. She is clearly an outlier, the only one not dressed in white. She breaks formation to address the audience during Mafuyu's first lines. Luca is here not just because she sings well, but because she plays a pivotal role in this story. She is the one who hears Mafuyu as she cries out. Throughout the whole MV, Luca doesn't quite fit in with the kids, often addressing the audience instead, acting as the narrator to the group's play, using her in this way to echo Mafuyu's relationship with Sekai and the virtual singers who inhabit it is nothing short of outstanding, and Geki makes me wish the Vocaloids were used this smartly more often. But there's still so much more to touch on, like the locale. We start out seemingly not in Sekai, we're framed up so close to the background that it looks like the MV is taking place in presumably Mafuyu's house, and during this Mafuyu's friends play out her fears, ignoring her, telling her this is what's expected of her, reaching out but never fully letting her grab on. And then as that culminates into this nightmarish scenario, we jump to Sekai, where Mafuyu is safe, where she and her friends now dance together in unison. That unity is only broken by Mafuyu breaking down, telling God that this is all too much. But even though the color still can't quite come back into her life yet, 
we still see Kanade is there to support her through all this. Like, fuck, it's gorgeous! It's for real, for real, playing out a whole narrative on par with what we've seen before, but cranked all the way up. Every storytelling technique is used to its fullest, from the shifting of locations to the choreography ranging from robotic to almost scary. It's nothing short of stunning, which is why this is the highest ranking Nightcore in music video from the year and overall, and why Engeki has surpassed our previously top ranked MV, Karakuri Perot. However, at number two, there's still one more MV for us us to see today. Number 1. Kashika. Bonus fact before we get into the meat of things, the Sekai team must have really liked these outfits made for this event, because you may have noticed that they've showed up three times total on this list. Funny, huh? When I first saw this music video, I became obsessed with it. And you know what? That's daunting. It's daunting and intimidating talking about your number one favorite. I guess let's first discuss how I'll be using the word theatrical again here, but it's pretty clearly different from how I've been using it when discussing Nightcord. Unlike Nightcord's MVs, which are literally performed akin to musical theater, Kashika is theatrical in a way that makes it feel like you are live watching their performance. It doesn't feel like a music video, it feels like one of their live shows, and it took me a couple of rewatches to figure out why it felt that way. The camera doesn't move. The shot will come in close and pull out wide, but we are always facing straight onto the squad. In a game where the camera will often move around, even doing spins at points, Kashika takes the unique and quite frankly bold decision to put aside that idea to provide a much more raw feeling to the MV. There is nowhere to hide. We see the kids having to hurry into place. We see them have to take awkward steps as they wait for the others to pass. Every warrant step, every wave of the arm, every small head nod. Much like the themes of the song it accompanies, this music video ends up with the characters feeling emotionally vulnerable. There are no fancy effects to distract the viewer from the sheer amount of explicit emotion on display. Similar to I Am, We Are, Kashika feels intimate, but while the idol's intimacy was hidden in the the dark, the squad leaves themselves fully exposed in the light. This intimacy is the point. Look at me. Look at the emotions I lay bare for you to watch and listen to. I've gotta make sure I don't go straight into the deep end of artsy feelings, so let's shift over to talking about the use of the stage. The warehouse goes through a handful of different lights, most notably the contrast between the dim, green-hued lights we get for most of the MV and the fiery reds during the most emotional of moments. The dim green parts feel oddly lonely, punctuated by these moments where Akito appears to be completely alone in a gray void. The first break of the dim lights before the first verse acts almost like an overcorrection, an outburst against all the negativity that starts off the song, but it's over so fast that you get the feeling that from here on out, everyone has a strong grasp on their emotions and keeping them in check. However, it all kicks off again during the pre-chorus. The lights become stark and washed out, adding to that emotional vulnerability and enhancing the second instance of the fires lighting the area. As this time, with the proper build-up with the lights, the fire feels less like an outburst and more like a a physical manifestation of Akito's passion. As he begs his heart to keep beating, he forces the warehouse to come alight alongside his will to keep going. And the way we jump across all the different versions of the stage during the finale, it's like a visual representation of all the turmoil Akito has just pushed through. The dancing is spectacular, as always, that shouldn't be a surprise, but I think the most interesting element to it is how Akito and Toya act almost independently to the girls at points. On Mako and Kohane all move in sync with each other well, but there are moments, most notably during the finale, where Akito and Toya prioritize singing over dancing alongside the gals, at least momentarily, but they always start up their dancing together, showing us that while the whole squad is here to support Akito, he can always rely on his fellow bad dog to be the closest with him. I think I could probably keep going on and on about Kashika, but perhaps it would be best to just suggest you watch it for yourself at this point. Kashika is not only the highest ranking Vivid Bad Squad MV of the year, not only is it the highest ranking Vivid Bad Squad MV overall, but the highest ranking MV in the game so far. I'm not sure if anything will top Kashika, but I'm excited to find out. 
So that's a whole lot of talking I just did, but I'm not done yet because I'd like to look at sort of overall thoughts about each team's MVs. And let's start with the virtual singers. While I don't love all of them, I am delighted to see the Vocaloids, who aren't just Miku, get to be featured in their own music videos too. And also, I feel I must commend the game for clearly going out of its way to incorporate more of the Vocaloids in the 3D MVs overall this past year. It's downright been the year of Mako, it seems. Which is great! That being said though, there is still an altogether too large discrepancy in the use of the virtual singers. I don't expect it to be totally even across the board, but I do wish the Sekai team were more willing to use more than just Miku for the groups more often. I had called out Leonid's heavy use of Miku specifically earlier, but honestly, more more jump and sort of Nightcord are just as bad. We still haven't had a 3D MV for Nightcore 25 with Len, and while, as of writing this, we finally have Kaito joining the idols on stage in the not too distant future, everyone other than Miku has barely been used at all across three years with the idols. Like I said, I don't expect it to be a clean, even split, but if anything, I wish they'd utilize the Sekai's starting Vocaloids more. Why has Rin only been in one MV with the idols when she's been there from the start? Same with Luka and the band, same with Kaito and the Circus Bunch. You chose them to be main characters in these group stories for a reason, right? Please use them more often! Leonid... Let's be honest, they didn't do super well with this list, and I'm honestly starting to worry that this is a me problem. They clearly tried to up the band's interest factor with this latest year. The girls go out of their way to engage with each other more often. We get to focus on the instruments more. They've been exploring letting Ichika move around, playing with the camera, and plenty of fancy locations and lights. And yet I find myself consistently still bored, and I'm like... But why? I'm not bored watching other performances like this, animated or live or in a music video. So what's my problem with Leonid? I really don't know. I want to like offer suggestions to help bring Leonid's MVs up the tier list in the future, but I just don't know what my issue is. The best I can guess is that the tone and vibe of the songs we see them perform are often quite similar. The 3D MVs are usually reserved for the softer, slower songs. Perhaps all they need is to let the girls rock out more? I don't know. But I do want to like Leonid's MVs more than I do. Wonderland's Showtime has unfortunately fallen into the trap I was worried they were headed towards last year, in that their music videos have skewed away from their live performance essence to lean into what are essentially dancing in a music video like Vivid Bad Squad, but the dancing isn't as good as Vivid Bad Squad. I stand by my statement from last year that I do prefer them clearly performing to an audience over simply dancing on stage, but perhaps a more interesting direction for the troupe to go in would be to lean away from the usual dancing that every group outside of Leonid does and focus instead on the kids acting. I already quite liked seeing the kids play out their scene in the Corey survey team and that idea continued really well into Childish War. I think it could be a lot of fun if Wonderland Showtime's MVs focused on the kids interacting and acting out their scenes moving forward. The group has such a fun collection of personalities that I doubt it would be detrimental and would at least be a more interesting direction to take than deciding to lean into crazy stage effects. More More Jump fans are probably disappointed to see the idols dethroned from the number one spot, but I think the idols continue to hold the title of most diverse when it comes to their MVs. They are still a bit hard to discuss here because they offer such a wide range of themes, performances, and level of storing across their music videos. I suppose if I had to offer some sort of suggestion for the future, it could be fun to see the girls get to play with their stage more often. The other groups have been allowed to appear to perform outside, or will have drastic set pieces totally alter their normal performance locations, and More More Jump does get that too. Kimigari Mercy and Peach Colored Key are good examples of that, but I think they could continue to play with those ideas in more interesting ways. Listen, the idols seem to have everything on lockdown. They really don't need to be looking to me for advice, you know? In contrast to Leonid, Nightcore 25 did quite well with the list, with all their new MVs ranking into the A tier or above. And like I said earlier, I think that's well deserved. The fact that I adore their new direction of leaning into a musical theater inspired way of performing shouldn't be a surprise given I wouldn't shut up about it during the ranking, but it's because it's really great. Nightcore already did an excellent job at weaving story and character into their MVs, and they've added and improved on that idea exponentially this 
past year. It really is as if the Project Sekai team have put everything they've learned in the last three years to deliver this team's story via their MVs. Night Court has all the makings to be the ones to take that number one slot in the years to come, and I am so excited to see where they go from here. I've always liked Vivid Bad Squad, but you may recall from my previous video how disappointed I had found myself with their MVs, how they really just boiled down to watch the kids dance, and how I had lamented the lack of narrative I'd felt the squad could be delivering for us. And I am so fucking glad that it seems someone at Sega had thought the same thing going into year three. Vivid Bad Squad has started to incorporate more characterization and narrative into their music videos. It's why they placed so well this year, and why I was able to say so much about each MV. Gone are the days where I desperately tried to find more to say than just, this dancing is cool and so are the lights. They've added a sense of story to the squad's performances without losing that excellent choreography the group are so good at. They still dance and sing, but now we're given extra reason and meaning behind it. I'm so proud of saying and Vivid Bad Squad for clearly going into this latest year wanting to improve on what the fans are given. And that statement applies to the whole game, really. Something I truly love with Project Sekai is how clearly the money Sega makes with it comes right back to the players. Not only evidenced by the S tier being the biggest group of songs this year, but in every way. Every gacha features stunning card art, we are given a complex narrative that sees the characters actually grow and change with time, the upgraded designs for everyone, we went from only getting two cards per event with an outfit to all three, we get a constant intake of new songs to play, and they clearly put decent money into these MVs with new shaders, new animations, new effects, and lights, and stages, and camera angles. I'm really glad that I was able to make this video and to have so many of the MVs outperform those from the last few years. I like that I can expect to see the work that goes into this game continue to improve over time, and I like that I get to have so much fun talking about a game I like like this. I hope you had fun too, and if I have any outstanding thoughts from the 3D MVs that come out in the time between me writing this and finishing editing this video, I'll put that here. It's only been Kiss the Villain so far, and it was honestly kind of dull, uh, but I'm just glad that Kaito gets to perform with the idols finally. Great, and I'll see you next time. Ah, I would. I just got too much to do tonight. In Dracula's castle, death flies through the window and breaks the glass. I couldn't give a shit about death. You should have removed that stained glass first. On guard! You guys forgot your battle cries. Oh, uh, oh uh, sorry. Uh, uh, On guard. Uh, uh, look out. Uh. Hey guys, drink this space alcohol and come with me to the sixth dimension. They're not here. Oh, what? What do we want? A heartfelt ending to this vine. When do... Dad? That's right, I'm home.